everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday webinar, the last day of class, fun and low prep ways to end the semester. Thank you for making time in this very, very busy time of year to come to the uh, webinar with myself and Cosette. Um, I'm Anita Parker and my colleague Cosette is uh, Lemlin is here today. We're both educational developers at the Center for Teaching and Learning and Cosette is also our associate uh, director. So you can go ahead Cassette. Thank you, Anita, and thanks for spending some time with us today. You know, we spend as instructors so much time thinking about the beginning of the course. Do we have the course ready, um, establishing rapport with our students on the first day of class, making sure that we're clear about our expectations, and just setting an overall positive tone for the start of the semester. Um, at the end of the course, here we are almost at the end of the course ourselves, we're commonly thinking about the students learning experience and having reached the target learning outcomes. Has the course been useful and positive experience for the students? And if we're being honest on December 1st, we're starting to count down the hours to a much needed break because teaching a course is a lot of work. Now that said, the last day of class is also really important because as Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So <clears throat> in other words, when we run into a former student on campus, or I often think of this in terms of if I ran into a student at the grocery store, would they smile and give a friendly wave and make short conversation? And would I feel good talking to the student or would it be an avoidance kind of situation? Obviously, we all want to have students be happy to see us spontaneously out and remember us for the impact that we had on, on their lives and through our teaching. But it's particularly important that we end our classes well during pandemic teaching circumstances because we're either teaching online at a distance, a physical distance from our students, or wearing face masks, in physically distanced classrooms. The last day of class for me as an instructor was always about uh, a kind of sports metaphor. I, I am in for sports metaphors. So for me, the last day of class was like breaking the tape at the finish line. It was like summiting the mountain of the course. It was the final play before the final buzzer of the game. So <clears throat> here's what I'd like you to do. In getting you to think about uh, your last class, take about 15 seconds now to pause, to meaningfully pause and put an idea in the chat. The chat is open. If there is a metaphor that resonates with you. So in other words, how would you finish the sentence? The last day of class is like, feel free to put an idea in the chat. So we've got the top of a mountain, preparing a suitcase for a trip, completing a project, providing closure, the Oscar party, the end of the road, the icing on the cake, the last chapter in the book, falling into a chair, exhausted after a long day, closing the circle. Thank you very much for sharing a few of your metaphors. All right, before we get into some ideas of fun and reflective activities that you can do on the last day of class, we want to clarify that we're not referring to a class where you're already busy. If your very last day has maybe a final exam or a final, final in-class uh, assessment or, or maybe some student presentations, that's not what we're referring to. In that case, we would be referring to the second last day of class. We're referring to the last time that you are together with students, whether in the same physical space or virtual space, and this is your last opportunity to end on a high note. We're going to organize our ideas in the reflective framework, and this is a really neat framework. If you haven't used it before, you can uh, hopefully take away from one thing to take away from this webinar is an idea of, of reflection in, in any regard. Uh, the what, 
the so what and the now what. And we really encourage you to stay true to your teaching style and and create the right tone for your class. So whenever you get ideas, you always from someone else, you always have to take it with a, a grain of salt and fit it into your own style. So what are you looking for to bring to the, the feeling to the end of the class? What are you most comfortable with? You want to end on a humorous note, on a reflective note, maybe a sense of gratitude, optimism nostalgia, encouraging, uh, et cetera. So I'll first look at the what component of the reflective framework, which refers to what happened. So this may work within your class to reflect upon, well, what happened in our class this term? And two ideas or teaching strategies for exploring the what with your students are either the journey or the greatest hits. Let me talk about the journey. The journey is an activity that can be done individually or in small groups with your students. Or you may choose to do it first individually and have the students form small groups and share. So the journey starts by taking out a piece of paper and a pen. Whether you're in person or whether you're online, a real piece of paper and a pen. Because we want students to be able to draw and be uninhibited by the software that they're using. So from a drone's eye view or a bird's eye view, what students are asked to do is draw the roadmap or the journey taken in the last three and a half months in a drawing on paper. So some questions to prompt students in this freestyle freestyle drawing exercise is to get the students to identify the key signposts in the course, the key intersections in the course, the roadblocks they may have encountered in the course, any potholes that they may have experienced, maybe for example, a particularly tough article or task, and any fueling stations, what fueled them and kept them going through the course. Other key prompts as the students draw out their roadmaps of the course could be, you know, what were the speed limits? What were the twists and turns in the course? Where was the freeway, the bridges, the tunnels? So students spend a little bit of time mapping out their own experiences in the course and what was meaningful for them. And then they can share um, their drawings or share pictures of their drawings in small groups afterwards. The second activity is called the greatest hits. If you're like me, you remember these mixtapes from a younger version of my life. This strategy is for the list makers out there. Students can do this individually or in small groups, or again, you may choose to do it individually first and then have students form small groups to share. Students, again, are going to take out a piece of paper and a pen, although in this case, a Word doc or a Google doc would also work okay. What the students do in Greatest Hits is they compile their own personal greatest hits in the course, maybe five or ten uh, greatest hits from the last three and a half months of the term. What were the influential readings, um, assessments, tasks, um, key conversations for them or experiences? And then to make it especially meaningful, why each item is on that greatest hits list. Again, students can share that information um, with another partner or in a small group to complete the cycle of the task. So that was the what of the reflective framework. And the next step is the so what. This is the component that refers to the significance of what happened. Why was it a big deal? And two ideas to explore the so what with your students we're calling the jam session. Or how about advice to future students? The jam session, again, small groups, or if you have a smaller class, you could do this as an entire class. It's in person. It can be done with sticky notes, like you see the students on the left doing, just writing down ideas and sticking it onto some kind of surface. Online, there are lots of online whiteboard style collaborative spaces such as the Google Jamboard that you can bring students together on and it would serve exactly the same purpose. Ask your students, how does this course fit in with your overall program? 
What have you learned that will help you with your future studies? What have you learned that will help you in your personal or your professional life going forward? And you could divide this jam board or this collaborative space in person or virtual into sections, into categories. Maybe you have a content category. What was so meaningful about the content that you learned in this class? Maybe you have a category about learning skills. What's the so what about learning how to learn? How did you learn how to learn from this course? Uh, maybe a category for interpersonal skills uh, that they learned that they have a so what thoughts about the significance of some teamwork that they did. Maybe you have a section for research skills, etc. So divide and organize their thoughts uh, that way, etc. The advice to future students, oops, sorry, is a letter. The advice to future students is a letter. Dear future students in this course, I'm writing to let you know about some tips and tricks to help you be successful in this course. These are the things that I wish I had known on the first day of class, dot, dot, dot. So again, a writing activity that can be done individual or reflective piece of paper, uh, so a Word document or a Google Doc would be fine as well. And we really, really recommend that you keep, you ask students to keep their letters positive and helpful. This is not the USRI. This is a space to be positive and helpful for future students because really every, every student begins a course with the intention of doing well in the course. So that is the so what. Our last category is the now what. The now what component of the reflective framework refers to the future impact of the course. Where do I go from here? Where do we go from here? Two ideas that explore the now what with your students are the crystal ball and the check-in with the future self. The crystal ball activity is an individual activity. As an instructor, depending on how much you like to engage with, with having some props and a bit of fun in class, you could have a clear plastic fish bowl that you could buy at the dollar store, for instance. In the crystal ball activity, whether you have a prop or not, each student has one small piece of paper, or depending on the size of the class, you can give each student more than one piece of paper. Students are asked to respond to one or more of the following prompt. A challenge I may or may not have overcome in the course is an unexpected aha that has been particularly impactful to me is this course will be helpful for my future plans because. Then the students place their paper in the crystal ball um, and the instructor can pull out anonymous responses and read them to the class. With the check-in with the future self, this is a personal letter that students write and intend to deliver to themselves on a set date, perhaps a year, three years, five years, or more. So for example, dear future self, I'm writing to check in and see how things have been since the course ended. Are you still connected with the person you sat beside in class or the members of your group or your instructor? What did you do with these valuable readings and notes? How did the course contribute to where you are in your career? If you had to take the course again, what would you do differently? Now that the course has just ended, I'm excited about, I'm worried about, how has that turned out? One goal I have at this time is, how did that turn out in my future self? One experience in the course that I want to make sure I never forget is this. Have you remembered this over the years? There is an app for this. Um, <laughs> future me allows the students to do this, to write such a, a letter to the future self that they will receive within a set period of time to see how they are further on in their lives following this course and consider the impact of this course. 
that's it. Those are the six ideas that we have for you today that we put our minds together and, and brought our resources together and, and, and tried to put them again in, in a framework that you would, that you would find useful. But we imagine that you have other better, good ideas that you have been using or that you saw someone else use and it, it piqued your interest and maybe you're planning on using it. So we'll end it there and we will open the floor for, for any questions that you might have for Kostat and I about how to end your class well or any sharing ideas that you would like to, to do.